Hey, how you doing? Well, you know, today just won't be in the kitchen for a little while. Wash your hands, that's what we do today. Although on a lot of my videos, I say you're supposed to eat all the germs you can. Um, helps keep you healthy. So, uh, anyway, we're going to sharpen a few knives today. It's Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. Down here in Denver, Aurora actually, kind of east of, of Denver, a little south, I think. So, uh, let's... Um, Let's find some knives. I got my sharpeners out there, and uh, actually there's one that's favorite that I was instructed uh, that, oh my god, yeah, needs, needs help. Um, and then uh, also, uh, we'll have another one here in a little bit um, that I want to get after. So, yep, yep, yep. Denver Magazine, SharpensBest.com. Alright, so let's see. And we'll actually do what I do with every knife. Okay, that's not very sharp. And it's actually got a, a tremendous... See how it grabs... Uh, grabs the knife, and I'll let you listen. Now you go this way quieter and it doesn't grab that's because there's actually a burr on that side of the blade that's a good way to tell where the burr is so uh, I don't know Let me just get right in this area here and actually this one was sent back by a customer and it has a, a little tiny nick that might have been uh, built in when they made the the tungsten carbide way down here in this corner right there and as I examine it it would be literally impossible unless you deliberately tipped it up and pushed it over. I can't even find it that way. So actually that, that nick would be impossible to even touch. Um, I, I think we've probably already sent him a new sharpener, but that nick that far down in the corner is literally impossible uh, to get at. And in the first place, I'm gonna stop. We go like that, like this, I'll stop. Okay, we're, we're that far up to about that far down and that's the range that we use, no matter what. Like I say, you would have to deliberately hold it clear up here. So enough for that. Uh, and I am using the sharpener that was sent back. So we just do this, don't press too hard, let it work, don't make it work. So I'm at about a 10 degree bevel, which would be down in about there. Let it turn a little bit. So I'll just hold still here. Let it come out here where it belongs and then brush along the blade. Now I'm going to turn it over and come back at me, bump into my thumb, turn it over, and go right on out, just like that. Now unless I, it, unless it's all I had, I wouldn't choose the little poker chip uh, to do the work with. I would rather have one of the longer handled ones. I can move faster and get the job done faster. Uh, with one of the longer ones. So just like that. Okay, now this side is smoother and quieter. This side is getting smoother and quieter. There was quite a burr on this side of the knife. So just like that. Like that. And by the way, I'm going to say I've never cut myself. I don't want to jinx. I don't believe in jinxing myself. Um, but I have never cut myself while sharpening with my sharpeners, ever. Not once. So let's see. That's called polishing the blade. Flip it every pass. Just like that. Alright, let's see what we got now. So there's no question that's a whole bunch better. Alright, so let's do just a little more work with the sharpened spark. On the sharpened sparks, we call that the sharpened spark, and this is the sharpened spark mini, or the large four-in-one and the small four-in-one. So maybe just get used to calling it the four-in-one. And so you either want the, the large four-in-one or the small four-in-one, or just call it the sharpened spark. We'll know what it is. If you call it the sharpened spark, it's the large original one. So just like that. So I flip the knife like this. I just pivoted on my hands and fingers, a little bit of wrist. Just like that, don't press too hard, I'll slow down so you can see, just like that. Maybe it's duller out here at the last, say, inch, 
I would actually set it down and do this. Don't bang it hard when you do that, just like that. And it might sound like I'm banging it kind of hard because it's echoing out of the cutting board. So just like that. Okay, now we just polish the blade a little bit again. Try not to get in a habit of going too slow like this. You'll never get it done. It just takes too long. All right. And that's probably, it won't move until it takes the fingernail off. So if you want to, come on in and, and look, especially right there and right there where I touched it. So that's how you would keep this, uh, you know your favorite kitchen knives. Um, it's up to you if you want to use it on expensive knives. You know, th there's a lot of knives around. That knife would be $400. You know, $200 to $400. Um, you may want to stick with a whetstone or a steel, but I can tune them up many times with one of these gently and not disturb that cutting edge at all except make it sharper, just like that. This is Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. You take care. You stay sharpened.